Have you ever been super confident with Redux until an interviewer asked something like, what's the difference between Redux and Context API? Or why do we even need a middleware like Redux Thunk or Saga? And suddenly your brain goes blank. But after this video, you will never fear Redux interviews again. So let's break down the top 10 most asked and most difficult Redux interview questions with real, concise and industry level answers you can actually say in the interviews. And don't skip the last one because the last one is the senior level trap question that most developers fail. And if you comment Redux interviews, I will provide the real detailed question and answer sheet for this complete video. So let's get started. Question number one is why do we even use Redux when React already has context API? Context API is great for simple global state like theme or user info. So it is great for single purposes, right? It is great for single purposes. But when your app grows with hundreds of components and async updates, context becomes slow and unmanageable, right? Because it has some rendering issues as well. Even a simple state change can cause the entire React tree to re-render in context. So Redux solves this with a simple predictable state container. In Redux, we have single store, right? In context, we have different, different contexts. So we need to understand which state is present in which context or which context provide. But in Redux, we have the single predictable state container and there are middlewares to handle async logics differently. In context, we don't have any separate system to handle the async logic. So context is like passing water by hand, but Redux is like a pipeline. So of course we'll use pipeline, right? So in case of growing and large apps, Redux brings the scalability and predictability, not the complexity. So you can tell this analogy in the interview as well. So it will be easy for you to make an impact answer. So question number two we have is, what is the difference between Redux Toolkit and Redux? Okay, so what is the difference between Redux Toolkit and Redux? So Redux is the core library, right? Redux is the core library. But Redux Toolkit is the applied version, applied version. So what is this? You write everything manually in Redux, actions, reducers, switch cases, immutability handling and everything. Redux Toolkit is an official or recommended way now. It's like Redux but modernized. What it gives? It gives create slice, create slice. It, it gives support for built-in Emer library. It also supports inbuilt thunk support. It is cleaner and faster to set up. So Redux is raw engine, right? Redux is raw. The Redux toolkit is a turbo engine. Question number three is how does Redux handle async operations like API calls? So Redux itself is synchronous, right? Redux itself is synchronous. It only knows how to send actions and update the state. To handle the async task like fetching data, we use middlewares. So middlewares are nothing but the piece of code which sits between the actions to reducers. So it, it runs in between the actions are reaching the reducers. That is the place of middleware. We have Thunk, Saga or Redux Logger, these kind of middlewares. In case of async calls like API calls, we can use Thunk or Saga, these kind of middlewares. So with Thunk, you can write a function that returns another function to perform asynchronous calls. So that another function returns the dispatch function and which we can dispatch based on the various state like loading, the successful data or rejection. With Saga, you manage async logics like a workflow using generator functions. So we have a stepwise execution in that. So that is the main difference between this. So Redux is a, like a train track and middleware is a signal system that lets you async trains pass smoothly. So it just signals it and handles the asynchronous logic. So let's start with the question number four. Question number four is what, what are the three core principles of Redux and why do they matter? So all the three principles of Redux are a state or store is the single source of truth. So everything, whatever is about the state is stored in the store. State is read only. Okay. You cannot uh, directly uh, mutate the state like state dot auth equals to true. Okay. So this is not allowed. And uh, so state needs to be updated immutably. And the third principle is reducers are pure functions. Okay. Reducers are pure functions. What are pure functions? Pure functions means whenever the same input is provided they produce the same output okay. whenever you say pass same input parameters the functions will return the same output but just like that reducers are pure functions so these are the three core principles of redux these principles make a redux predictable testable and debuggable so that's why large apps even with the complex user flows stay stable so that's about this question question number five is why do we say redux is predictable predictable means we can predict uh, what is going to be happen or what is already happened so redux is trackable trackable means we can track what 
cause this state update because the same actions we have for the same actions it produces the same update so that's the predictability it doesn't cause any side effects okay side effects so side effects means you are passing something and that is happening differently or that is causing different effects each time so that that doesn't happen with the redux so for same actions it, it provides the same update Re reducers are pure functions so as i said the pure functions provide the same result when the same input parameters are passed and also we have the single source of truth that is store so it is not like that the state is coming from multiple stores it is not like that so we can always check in the store what is the final state and what was the earlier state of a particular component so that's why all these four points make it predictable right so we can predict uh, what what will be the state update in this case question number six is what exactly create slice do in the redux toolkit so create slice is like the heart of redux toolkit so we we create slices using a redux toolkit so consider the entire state the entire application state as is like a pizza okay and a slice is kind of a pizza slice so the multiple slices of states become a single state and that is our store so that's the whole purpose of naming it as a, a slice so it automatically generates action creators and reducers so you can say we don't need to create action creators differently so reducers in this reducers object itself it creates the action creators so action the names of the actions will be counter okay counter counter is coming from the name of the slice slash the reducer name like increment so in the redux in the pure redux you will need to create constants like like, like increment okay increment counter underscore counter so just like that we need to create a constants in the api redux but in, in this it creates uh, the action creators with with this naming convention implicitly so you don't need to worry about that and then it it makes it manageable okay so you you have to just manage the state of your particular component or particular feature using slice and the rest will be handled by redux so that's how it, it separates the concerns and also it is manageable for large types question number seven is what is the role of immer in redux toolkit so immer is a secret magic that makes redux toolkit feel easy why because normally redux requires immutability right so suppose you have to return the new state what you will have to do is you have to spread the earlier state like the old state and you have to make changes in the new state values so this becomes very difficult when the state is like has multiple nestings so you will need to write it in the like the spread syntax and in the nested way and it, it becomes very difficult for it so in immer you can directly write it as a mutable logic like old state dot org equals to true okay you can write it in immer and immer internally converts it to the same format okay immer internally converts it to the same format you can write code like mutable in the immer library and uh, here you can see in this example also state dot value we are incrementing by one so this looks mutable but uh, in, in the end it is converting to the spread and uh, immutable syntax question number eight is how does rdk query okay redux toolkit query simplify api calls compared to redux thunk so redux thunk makes you manually manage the api states like loading success error okay three separate actions and three reducers it becomes very difficult to manage when there are multiple api calls are happening so rtk query redux toolkit query does it all automatically okay so here you can see uh, we we have the create api in which we have the reducer path the base query where we are passing the base url and the endpoints like uh, date post and on this kind of we can define so so we can create just api slice using create api and uh, specify the endpoints and rtk query will have the caching okay will handle the caching refetching and loading and error state and uh, background updates everything will be handled by rtk query so th this is the beauty of rtk query so it reduces the boilerplate code and it, it adds some extra features and handles the api intelligently the next question we have is what is the difference between create async thunk and create api in rdk so in both of these options we handle the async logic but in different layers okay create async thunk is like a middleware the thunk middleware for so this is for custom async tasks like login or login from submission you handle everything manually in the reducers in create api so it is basically the rdk query api so in create api we create a slice for api so it is for structured apis and data fetching that uh, needs the caching uh, refetching auto state handling so everything is done automatic in this create api so we can create thunk like this so create async thunk we, we pass the, the name slash the reducer name and 
and uh, we get the the async logic here so this page user becomes the thunk and uh, and we can add extra reducers using builder and we can uh, add the reducers for pending full build and the uh, rejected state here in short the create async thunk is for a one-time async logic for one api and create api is for long-term data management so the next question is what are the common mistakes developers make when using redux toolkit so there are three uh, ma major mistakes that uh, most of the developers make while using redux toolkit the first one is like they don't know the difference between mutating and uh, immutability so they they try to write in the mutating way in the redux itself and redux toolkit we have the emr library but in the redux uh, we don't have it so they write it in mutating logic so it doesn't work in redux the next is get default middleware so if you see so we in the middleware we we have this function which returns get default middleware and we just concat because redux toolkit internally uses other middlewares as well we just need to concat it to the external middleware they forget this step and uh, they just write the middleware and it overwrites or it doesn't work uh, as intended and the next is uh, duplicating of step state so many developers what they do is they try to duplicate the state in the context and redux as well so it's it's a major flaw so it becomes unmanageable to track where the state update is happening so never ever duplicate the state in context and redux either it put it in the context or either in the redux so these are the common mistakes they do so there you go the top 10 commonly asked and most difficult redux and redux toolkit interview questions if this video helped you level up your redux game comment redux interview and i'll provide you the, the detailed answer sheet for these questions and don't forget to like share and subscribe this video and share with your friends i'm shubham and see you in the next one that's it for today bye